What's going on, everybody? It's Brett, Prairie Performance. Uh, I'm probably not going to see my face on many of these videos because who cares to see that? This is about data, technical stuff, why I do what I do. To preface this video, um, I'm going to talk about the things that I do and why. Uh, not to say that how other people do it is wrong or whatever. I just do it my way because it works for me. So today we're going to talk about hand-ported cylinder heads versus CNC ported cylinder heads. We're going to talk about some changes we've made around here, some advancements um, with valves and seats and guides and all that stuff. Talk about some, um, you know, finishing the port, flow numbers, you know, a bunch of little stuff. I may cut this into a couple different videos. So anyway... Uh, I get questions all the time. What's the difference between my stage one, stage two, stage three ported heads and the corresponding intake manifolds, um, and throttle bodies and things like that. So what we have here is basically a stage two head. Um, it's not complete yet. It's close though. So this one actually, we ended up putting seats in both the intake and exhaust and we changed the um, valve guides over to bronze. Um, that way we could reshape the stuff that we want, change the angles, and get proper clearances for our valve stems. This particular head is just going to get matched with a Stage 3 NA cam, um, GPI drop-in rods and pistons, um, and then some spray. So, some things I do want to talk about is why am I not seeing, seeing my heads yet? So, the GM head from the foundry is honestly not very good. So this head in particular, i.e. the LT head, is actually quite a bit better than the old LS stuff. But what we have to talk about is core shift. So core shift is basically when they bind the head together at the foundry. Use this head as an example. You can see this line going down the middle of it. That transfers into the port, as you can see, and it's in every single head. How bad that is, or how different in height, let's say, that the shift is between this side and that side, or top to bottom, however you want to make it sound, is drastic in some heads. Not to mention, the seat itself and how they drill the valve guide um, hole, or whatever you want to ca call it, it actually allows the head, or the, the seats themselves, to shift on pretty much any axis that you can think of. They'll shift front to back they'll shift side to side and on top of that they'll actually rotate like what i was just doing with my hand so if this is vertical or flat however you want to call it horizontal they'll actually be rocked at different angles in there when you start to cut your um valve angles you start to see it really bad on the stock seats um not to mention where and when and how and whatever you have to port on these heads so the problem with the CNC program is the CNC is deadly accurate. The problem being the head is not accurate. It's not accurately built. It's not accurately assembled. It's not accurately put together every single time. So you may take a hundred different heads, put them all on the same exact CNC machine. The CNC machine does not know the variations in the head. So it has to cut only what it's programmed to cut. So that means that with all of these angles that shift, you may end up with a real fat short turn or a real narrow short turn, or you may dig into the pocket too far, any of that other stuff. Remember, we're just trying to get as much air out of this hole as possible into the cylinder. So if we have variations in where this all sits, it's going to change the way the flow enters every single time. So if we don't have the ability to change our program or to match the core shift, i.e. by doing it by hand, the CNC machine simply can't compensate. So what you either have is an undercut port or a lot of manufacturers will just overcut the port to make sure they hit everything so that it looks pretty. Um, I'll get back to looking pretty. So what hand porting allows me to do is allows me to flow every single port to make sure they're all within 1%, but I can go in and actually apply the same port shape and dimensions to every single port based off of where the center mass of the valve stem comes out and how each seat end up being positioned in each port intake and exhaust so that's kind of the benefit to doing hand porting heads the problem is it's absolutely time consuming um it's 
really absurd at how long it takes to do an LT head, just considering how much material gets taken out. Um, will I entertain a CNC program at some point? Some point, I should say. Yeah, but it'll be a small cut and be hand finished. Um, so while we're talking about that, the differences between my stage one, stage two, and I'll point out some stuff on my stage three head, although these heads over here aren't ported yet. So on the stage two, basically you're going to get a little bit of ch chamber work, but I don't really mess with the GM chamber very much. GM spent six million hours of computational fluid dynamics to ensure that their intake port and combustion chamber and all that stuff was accurately matched to the pistons and whatnot for the most um, uh, homogeneous combustion or however you want to call it. So on stage two, we just take what we need um, around the, the valve seat area into the combustion chamber just to make sure we maximize flow. Take a little bit out over here and here. Now, one of the biggest deals with the stage two uh, port is the actual intake port dimension um, as it goes vertical. So remember, we're trying to maintain velocity. However, our biggest thing is trying to get as much air to the valve as possible. So by changing the size of the intake port, as you can see, I really don't take that much material from the inside. You can still see the casting flash marks. Um, you can still feel it right here. But what we do is I actually try and take the roof out as far as I can to give myself some dimension over the short term. The more dimension I get over the short term, the more direct shot I have at the valve. That twofold, what this allows me to do is it allows me to open up my manifold. So we have to think backwards when we're talking about cylinder heads or any airflow. We have to think all the way from the cold air filter through the cold air intake track, through the intake manifold, to the cylinder head, to the intake valve. On a naturally aspirated setup, it's only what the piston draws is what you see at the front or what you get into the motor. I hope that made sense. So you have to think backwards when you think airflow. We're not cramming anything into the cylinder. We're using piston uh, stroke down overlap with the cam and a couple other techniques to create as much volumetric efficiency as we can. That means we need to make sure that everything in front of this intake port is as well sized as can be for the uh, cylinder head itself or for the motor application, I should say. So with this, we need to create velocity. However, up in front, I need to be able to create more space in the intake manifold to draw more air. Um, that kind of leads into a whole nother discussion of dynamic flow versus static flow. I'll talk about that probably in a follow-up video because this thing's already getting kind of long and we haven't even touched on much at all yet. So the stage one head, I don't touch any of the vertical. So with a stage one head, I can't give you a stage two ported intake manifold. Um, it simply won't fit and it won't be conducive to what we're doing. There's also a little bit of short turn work that's different in the stage two and some pinch point work to smooth out the transmission transition and make sure that we don't have any port flow crash. Um, I'll talk about laminar port flow and some other stuff in a subsequent video. So let's go over here. So this is the going to be a stage three head. So what we did is we put a, a basically a 2200 copper beryllium seat in it. We did the um, bronze valve guides, and we had a custom valve made. So this valve was made to all my specifications by Victory. Now on the top, we basically had a little bit of a steel um, cap put on there so that we don't have to run a lash cap. This valve at 2165 versus, excuse me, that's the exhaust valve. This valve at 21. Um, 20 or well, 2125 2130 it's debatable sometimes um, this valve the stock valve weighs 99 grams this valve only weighs 80 grams so we got a bigger valve with 20 less grams basically 19 so the problem is the stage 3 head I don't know what we call it a problem but the exhaust valve is a stainless steel manly right now we're probably going to go to uh, Feria this valve is 101 grams. So we kind of shot ourselves in the foot. We dropped a bunch of weight with the intake valve, but then we picked it back with the exhaust valve. The reason we did that, um, besides valve shape and whatnot, 
was due to uh, the strength of the exhaust valves and most of the guys that are running these heads want to spray them, things like that. The stock exhaust valves are not holding up well to boost or spray. There's been plenty of documented issues. Now, the stock exhaust valve is 73 grams. So what we're looking for, and at this point I'm having Victory make us some titanium exhaust valves um, for the higher revving motors, but um, lighten the valve train, you know, cam appropriately, uh, size the intake ports appropriately, and the combustion chambers, the intake manifold, the throttle body, all that other stuff. So uh, the reason I have this head out here is to show you guys where CNC will be usable. So this is a uh, Texas Speed as cast uh, head, their new deal. Uh, they were kind enough to send it to me. Um, let me do a port for them or well for myself and then I plan on sending it back to them. Let them check it out. Um, now this head has plenty of material. So they can put this in their machine and their foundry system is a whole lot better than the stock GM because they're not making millions of cylinder heads every year. That is where CNC would be totally beneficial. They're in complete control of the foundry, the casting, and the programming. So something like this, I would not shy away from buying a Texas Speed fully CNC'd head. Um, they do great work. They put in a lot of effort onto their ports and whatnot. Um, so that's why that head's out here. Now, while we're discussing CNC versus hand port, um, let's talk about finish really quick. If you notice, my cylinder heads, my intake manifolds, my throttle bodies, you will never see a cartridge rolled finish. Uh, just simply don't believe in it. It's kind of outdated. I don't know why anybody does it. However, you can get a carbide finish with my stuff. The reason is texture. Air is very heavy. It's dense. It wants to move in a straight line. Um, and if we're talking volumetric efficiency, we're talking round is 100% like a pipe. Anything that changes from round... So this would be 100% volumetric efficient and straight. So anything we change from that shape with any angles is losing volumetric efficiency and flow efficiency. So we have to be careful with how we shape and do things. Um, now, with that being said, a smooth finish is going to make air want to basically glance off it or not follow the, the, the size or the shape, I should say. So the more texture we get, we do gain a little bit of cross-section area without uh, costing us any real port volume. And we give the air something to grip onto and help turn corners and travel and things like that. So um, one other thing I want to cover before I cut this video off is the short turn. A lot of people are afraid of the short turn. Um, that is a place you can damage a cylinder head if you're an at-home porter. Um, if you don't get that right, you can cause problems. So, again, I'll probably do a subsequent video um, on airflow itself and what we're going after and the numbers and why. But just know that the more you lay this back, the more top end you get or high lift flow. The straighter this is, depending on your valve angles and whatnot, the more low lift flow you get. All right, guys, I'm going to cut this one off for right now. Kind of went long-winded and really didn't get into anything I wanted to actually talk about. So I'll, uh, I'll do a follow-up video. There will probably be a three- or four-part series just on cylinder heads. All right, guys, see you.